Hello, hello, and thanks for joining me once again as I dive into the wacky world of Visual Synapse Analytics. So today we're dealing with one of our most commonly requested um, topics, which is how we work with custom libraries in Python. So we're working in the Synapse Spark pools, and we've written some functions, and we want to compile that down. Compile, Python doesn't really compile, but collect that into a library so we can distribute it, we can manage versions, we can share it with other people. How do we do that? Where do we start? So that's going to be using a thing called a wheel. So I'm going to talk you through how we create a quick function, how we bring that function into a wheel, and then how we associate custom wheels with the Azure Synapse Spark pools. So don't forget to like and subscribe if it's a useful video for you. And as always, let us know in comments if you've got any other suggestions for videos or anything that you've used this for. Otherwise, let's get started. All right, so I have got my Spark pools open. I've got I've got a folder full of Parquet files. So I've got a place in my lake with some data. And the example we're going to use is, I would like to register these tables with Hive. Super simple, super, super basic example. So I want to be able to create a database called AdventureWorks. There we go. And I want to be able to register a set table. So I've got this table name of address, AdventureWorks. I've got the location. I'm using an F string to put the location, to put the table name into that location. And then I'm running a bit of Spark SQL. So create table if not exists, take my database name, take my table name using Parquet and then put in my location. Now I'm having to know the logic. I'm having to know the syntax to build up that SQL string so I can reg this table. I'm having to run it via spark.sql. There isn't just a straight Python command I can say going, just register this, here's the details. So that's fine, that's not a huge amount of work. If I'm using that over and over again, I'm using it in lots of different places, that might be slightly annoying for me to have to remember the syntax, write out that string, do a bit of string manipulation each time. So maybe let's just wrap that in a quick function. I'm going to be able to say Python register, date, register tape, throw it some variables, and it to handle the building up that string, running Spark SQL, tell me what it's done. That's what we do quite often. Okay, so that would look like this. So I'm going to say... Def, I want to define a new Python function. It's going to be reg to hive, which I want to call it. So anytime I want to reg a new table, I'm going to say reg to hive and throw it these three bits of information, my database name, my table name, and the location of the actual files in the lake. That's then going to create a new string variable. It's going to build up the exact same thing I just did. So take the database name, take the table name, use an F string to put it all together into a single string. It's going to run that command for me. And then it's going to print out a little message saying, this is the command I've just ran. So it can troubleshoot, it can make sure it's doing what I asked it to do. So that is all good. Okay, so super simple. We've got a few variables. We've got a way of doing it kind of uh, longhand manually. And we've wrapped it and said, this is how I would do that as an actual function. We can then take this so we can then say, well, we'll run that function for me. So reg to hive, there's the database name, there's the table name, there's a location. And I get that little executed, I get a little string. That's what I was doing, that print executed, telling me this is what I've done. Easy, right? That's good. The hard bit comes when it says, how do I then take that function, that register hive, and then put it into any kind of library? How do I make a file which has that function encapsulated inside of it that I can share with other people? So that's when we're gonna be building a thing called a Python wheel. So it's a WHL file. Um, tends to get referred to as a wheel. There's another format called egg that you might have seen. Wheel seems to be becoming the more de facto. So anything, anytime we're doing things in advanced analytics, we use a wheel file. Uh, and they're a fairly common way of sharing Python files between different people. So two different types of libraries we can associate inside um, the Spark pools of Synapse Analytics. The first is managed. So if there's a library that someone else has made, so it's not, it's not us, this is not what we're doing here. It's someone else has already written this function. This exists somewhere else. There's a well-known Python library that's open source. And I want to pull down and use that. There's a different process for working with those. If that was what I was doing, I've got my management portal over here. I can go into my Spark pools. And then for a given Spark pool, I mean, advancing Spark currently, I've got this packages tab. So if I'm looking for a Python file that already exists, I can go to packages. I can upload an environment config file. And that's just a text file that has a list of all the different Python libraries I want to include. 
It's in a format called pip freeze. So pip is the well-known Python kind of uh, package manager. And essentially it's just a list of all the different Python packages that pip should go off, try and find and pull down from the public repository. So again, that only works if that library is already sitting in that public repository. So if it's a library I'm trying to build personally, I can't use that approach. Okay, so if you're using that, you upload your text file, you hit go, you need to refresh your Spark session, and then you can start using it. But that's not what we're doing here. Instead, I need to bring that down locally. I need to build a Python wheel file, and then I can upload that custom wheel file to Synapse Analytics. So let's have a look. I've got a folder here. Um, so I've got a little project folder called Hydrate Wheel. Now, Hydrate is the name of the Advancing Analytics Data Lake Processing Framework, because we hydrate a lake with data. Yeah, yeah, see what we did there? Um, so there's already a ton of Python already in here. So let's just go and create a new one. So I've got my different libraries. So inside Hydrate, it's like one big namespace. I've got a few different classes. I'm going to go into Utils. And this feels like a new one. So let's say I want to have a, just a new text file. Call it hive.py, is a Python file. And that's just then a blank bit of Python I can start working with. So let's just open up in VS Code. Again, I could have been good and created it from inside here, but it's fine. And then we can write our functions. We can start defining it. So I'm just going to go back to our notebook, ramp that same function, and bring it in. Okay, super simple. Bring in that function inside that Python file. And when I run this, it's going to go and define it. Now, the one difference is um, when we're working within Spark pools, it doesn't automatically have the Spark context built in. So if we're doing this in Databricks, I wouldn't need to do this next step. But for Synapse pools, I do have to. So what I need to do is say, there's another thing I'm going to pass into my register high function, and that's my current Spark context. So one of the things I'm going to do, so when I do like spark.sql and I pass my SQL string, that's just saying in my current Spark session, write some SQL, do a thing. I need to pass in my current Spark session as a variable to this function. But that's it. Otherwise, that's completely fine. That is obviously there's no comments, there's no documentation. I'm a terrible developer here. But that function itself will work. So we can hit save. We can close that. Um, let's go back. So by the nature of the fact that it's inside this folder, it's going to get included in, uh, in my build. And that's all because of this setup.py file. So I've got a little setup Python file, which has all the config for my particular wheel. So there's a few things in here. So I'm putting in some documentation. I've got a version number, so I can decide what version of Hydrate I'm actually going to compile here. So I've changed it, so I should increment that. It's now version 0.1.05. Uh, uh, some information, who made it, advanced analytics, all that kind of stuff. And then that is super important. That's setup tools .find packages is a thing that's then going to, rather than me give it a fixed list saying, here are the different Python files I want you to include in this wheel, it's just going to go off and recurse through subfolders looking for Python files. So that's great, and that, that kind of means I can just drop that new one like I just did. That hive.py isn't mentioned anywhere in this setup file, but it's going to get included in my wheel because of that little command. I can then do a little bit about you know dependencies. I can say, actually, you need to pre-install these packages all that kind of good stuff. So let's hit save on that. So we get our version saved and close it down. Okay, so that is my local wheel all set up and configured in terms of my source code. But I need to build that wheel. I need to create a file that I can use to upload. And this is all based on that Python library called setup tools. So I need to have setup tools installed locally in my Python environment before I can do this. Okay, so let's get a new Windows terminal open. And, and I just need to go to my right, right folder. So I need to be over here. And then I can run one of these setup tools commands to actually sort of go ahead and build this wheel. So I'm going to say this needs to be a Python command. I'm going to do my setup.py. So I'm kind of saying reference this uh, setup file to actually go ahead and do this build. And then I've got two commands I can follow it. So sdist and bdist is wheel. So I'm telling it, I specifically want you to create a wheel file because you can use setup tools to do various different build functions uh, with Python. So I can hit that, it's going to go off. You can see it recurs to a ton of stuff. And importantly, in my list of things that it's gone and found, you can see it has picked up the fact I've got that new Hive Python file. 
So that's gone through. That's built a load of stuff. And I should actually see I've got a load of new folders here. So I can go inside my dist, my distribution folder. And there we go. I've got a wheel file that's labeled hydrate 1.05, because that's my new version. And that is now something I can go and upload onto my um, sign up Spark pool. So you need to have that local stuff set up. If you're working with wheel files, you need, that's kind of the normal convention. You need to build up your setup UI, build out all the different namespaces via the subfolders, and then make sure you've got all your different functions and be aware of are you using Databricks, sign up Spark, because you might need to have that Spark context in there. All right, so let's take that and upload it. So I've got my Spark pool here sitting ready. Uh, and the way you need to upload custom wheels is manually into the lake currently. There's no uh, signups blade you can go to and hit upload and just do it automatically. We need to go to the right space and we need to upload our um, wheel file. Now I'm gonna do something a bit funny. I'm gonna upload it to a different Spark pool. Now the reason being, uh, it seems a little funny about caching those libraries. So I've tried it a few times when I've uploaded the library. I've then changed something with it, uploaded a new version. And then because my Spark pool, uh, even though I restarted my Spark session, the underlying Spark pool hadn't restarted. Therefore, I didn't get the new update of that um, library. So I'm gonna force, I'm gonna make sure I definitely get it. This is a clean new Spark pool. So I'm going into, let's start from getting. So inside my core lake, I've got my signups folder. Inside there, workspaces, so I can see all the different signups workspaces that are associated with this lake. I've only got one, which is my advancing sign -ape. And then go into Spark Pools. Let's work with my Spark Pool config. And I get my list of all the different Spark Pools I have. So I'm going to do this onto my advancing Spark one. Inside library, because that's what I'm doing. And then I've got libraries.zip. So they're the default libraries that are automatically installed. I need to make a new folder. So in this case, I'm uploading some Python libraries. So I need to make a Python folder. Then inside there, I can go and upload my wheel. Now, all of that is in the docs. So I'll drop a link uh, to the docs underwood. You don't have to remember that whole file structure. And then I can, there we go. I can grab my hydrate wheel, hit upload, and hit go. Okay, so because that wheel file is now sitting inside the Python folder, inside my libraries folder, inside that Spark pool, next time I start that Spark pool, it's automatically going to instantiate that library. It's going to make sure that library is installed. I'll still need to import it inside my code, but the library will actually be there ready to use. So let's go and actually sort of start that working. I'm gonna switch over, so I need to refresh, choose advancing Spark, and stop that. So that's gonna change my Spark session. So I need to actually start this if we just try and let's just get my variables done. So I do need to wait for that Spark session to come up. And then when it does, we'll be able to import that new Hydrate library. So let's get a few things ready for that when it comes up. So importing a library, so I can do that. So that would be kind of just import the whole namespace and import the core of it. Uh, and that's a good way of just testing, does it have the library there? It does that actually exist. Remember that is case sensitive. So if I don't hydrate with a capital H, then that wouldn't work. Uh, so hydrate, we can check. But we can actually check the lower level kind of things I can do, import, so hydrate. And then inside there, we had utils. Inside there, we've got hive. So I should be able to actually sort of go down that folder structure. And that is all managed by the fact I've got those subfolders, but it means they are uh, done as subclasses inside my namespace. And I can alias if I need to. So I can just say HR. So that means anytime I refer to HI dot, I can then refer to functions that are inside that Hive Python file. And again, I've only got one function in there. So I managed to import that. We can then actually do HI dot register hive, register table, can't remember what I called it. Uh, and then we can go ahead and use that function. So let's start getting that ready. So I can do hi dot, uh, and then what did we call our thing earlier? Register hive, and we'll need those three bits. In fact, it'll look like that. So that's our test. If we can do that, if we can run that command, use those variables that we had up top, our dbase table name and loc, that's gonna work. The one change we need to be aware of, and that's adding in our current Spark context. So that's then aware of that and built in. And if we do that, we can test and we can make sure. So our test of success, if we go over here in our tables, we need something we've not registered before. So let's go with product. So I'm going to change this over to be product. And then as soon as our Spark session is started, we can hit go on that, refresh those variables, 
go down, make sure that we can successfully import our hydrate library, and then we can actually go ahead and try and run that product. And so we should be able to see that registered hive table. Now that is how we do everything really. So anytime we're onboarding a new client, anytime we're kind of getting set up with some new functionality writing into our data processing framework, so much of it starts with working with that local Hive um, Hydrate library. So building up a Python library and starting to actually sort of expand on it and build on it is a super important way of formalizing your code development. Okay, so that looks like I started. So let's just rerun that so we definitely get the product. Okay, that's good. Now, the test of success. Can we see that Hydrate library? Yes, we can. So import it successfully. If it couldn't find that module, we'd get an error. So if I just go and do with a capital H, it'll say, no, I don't know what that module is. So the fact that we didn't get an error with that Hydrate means it has successfully seen that library. So we can do that again. Let's do hydrate.utils.hive. It successfully found it, which is great. So final test, let's see if we can run this hi.reg.hive spark dbase table name. And we're looking for that string. So that same string that we had earlier, that create table if not exists, we should be able to see that it ran that bit of SQL. So it's running Spark executions. So that looks good. So it's trying to read that thing. It's trying to read out the structure of that Parquet file so that it can build up the message that Hive needs so that it can do that thing, that job executed has succeeded, and there we go. So we've had a little bit of feedback, which was our print command at the very final part of there. So if we go over here and hit refresh, we've now got product uploaded as a proper table. Awesome. So that is actually working nicely. So just be a little bit aware of even if I stop that session and restart it, it looks like it doesn't drop the libraries from the underlying Spark pool. So you need to wait for the Spark pool itself to shut down and restart for you to get that real restart of config. Now that looks like a little bit of uh, something that's kind of left. Basically, it's a little slight missing gap when working with custom wheels. So if we go the other way, if we change that environment config file, the little button saying force restart, which forces the entire Spark pool cluster to restart, so you get that fresh uh, set. We don't have that when we're just uploading manual custom wheels. So we could actually, I guess I could have an environment config file that I change slightly and then hit refresh and that will reforce that Spark pool to restart. If now, just be a little bit aware if you're changing things around on the fly and you're working with a custom wheel and you want to kind of chop and change how that functionality is working, just make sure you're stopping that Spark pool underneath or switching to a new Spark pool and waiting for your session to restart. But that is how you register functions. It's how you build wheels locally. Again, making sure you've got that setup tools library installed on your local Python instance. And that is how you upload a local wheel up onto your sign up Spark pool. And then you can start working with it and start formalizing your code. So again, hope that is super useful for you. Hope that inspires you to start building and curating your own functional libraries. And again, any questions, let us know in the comments and we'll put another video for you to go and watch later. Cheers.